Good day, Bayside Family Church and friends. Thank you for joining us. This is our video service for Sunday, June 21st. It's going to be a great service. I've asked some friends to participate. We are going to hear uh, a, a special Father's Day story from uh, Cambodia. We are going to see a compilation of some uh, very special youngins from our church family. So it is going to be a great time to get together. But let me first and foremost say to all of you, Happy Father's Day. Now for some, Father's Day is a very difficult day because of a loss of a loved one or a, a father that was uh, a very difficult and, and perhaps even abusive. But for the Christian, Father's Day can be a beautiful day because we have a Heavenly Father who loves us and will never stop loving us, and He's always for us. So I ask all of you today, uh, let's rejoice in our Heavenly Father, uh, and that will give us a happy Father's Day. And remember, uh, you need to give Him a gift today, and the best gift that our Heavenly Father wants is from, for time uh, from you. So give them the gift of time. A couple announcements before I turn to Pastor Ryan. Announcement number one, uh, as you receive this video, and these videos are gonna keep on coming on our Sundays and our regular release time, but as you receive this video, we are meeting in our church sanctuary. We are planning for a 9.30 Sunday morning uh, gathering. It, it is RSVP uh, requested uh, to go on the website or to contact the church office. We have a certain limited amount of people that can come to church, uh, number-wise, for the protocols of the virus. So we'll have a second service and a third service. And we are asking for an RSVP just so that we can be properly prepared and be uh, ready to go in between services. So if you put up with that protocol, that will be wonderful. But thank you for joining this video. It is going to be a great service. I'm going to ask Pastor Ryan if he would now lead us in worship. And let's enjoy our, the time we have together. God bless you. For oh, your love reaches to the sky. There's no space between you and I. Wherever I go, I'm never alone. I'm waking up, I come alive. Oh, the past is gone, future can wait. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day. Day. Oh, I breathe you in, shout out your praise. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day! What a beautiful day! Oh, your face brighter than the sun. Your grace rewrites every wrong. Wherever I go, I'm never alone. I'm waking up, I come alive. Oh, the past is gone, future can wait. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day. So what a beautiful day, what a beautiful day. My past is in the grave, my sin is washed away. This is Christ in me, this is Christ in me, oh. Christ in me, oh, my past is in the grave, my sin is washed away, this is Christ in me, this is Christ in me, oh, I'm living unashamed, now my heart's forever changed, oh, this is Christ in me, this is Christ in me, the the past is gone, the future can wait. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day. 
What a beautiful day, oh. Breathe you in, shout out your praise. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful day, oh. The past is gone, the future can wait. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day. Beautiful day, oh. I breathe you in, shout out your praise. Oh, my soul, what a beautiful day, oh, what a beautiful day, oh. Good morning, Bayside family. It's Father's Day, and I am very, very excited to share the stories of two men I love and respect very much. One is Passe, and he is the Asian Outreach Cambodia National Director. And the other is Monirat, a fine young man who works with our Assisting Children to School program. This is their story. Uh, they're heartfelt and passionate, and I trust you'll enjoy them this morning. My name is Bisei. I'm 34 years old. I'm married, and I have three children, two girls and one boy. I have also adopted 12 children. They are fatherless, and some of them are parentless. I live in Stung Trang province. I'm a church leader and I serve rural communities with Asian Irish Cambodia. I'm going to share with you about my life as a father of many children. I grew up in a poor family and I have experienced many tough challenges in my life. After marriage, my wife and I made commitment to serve Jesus Christ in any way that our family can do. I often went to share good news at different places and I saw many things in children that touched my heart. When I see children have lack of care, I feel pity on them. I want to help them. I think to help a child is the best way to change the communities and to build a strong future. So my wife and I decided to help fatherless and parentless children from remote places. We open a dormitory in our house for the children. We send them to school, we feed them, and we teach them the word of God. This is how my family started a church. From the day that I got children to live in my house, I become a father of many children. I face many things. I invest a lot of my time for my family, and I play a lot of roles. I want to be a source of encouragement. I work hard and I spend much time with them. I show them I'm a protective and a supportive person. A father, I need to treat children equally, and I play the role of a loving father in every child's life that cannot be filled by others. I found that children learn from me and use me as their example. When I was young, I also did that. My father was my example and my teacher. One day he taught me to dream and asked me to work hard. He said to me, Be say, your dream is possible and hard work can feed your stomach. I learned a lot from my father. I learned from his success and I learned from his failure. The most part of his life impact my life. And I believe my life will impact my children's life. A big family is not easy. We often struggle with many things. When our children get sick, sometimes we cannot afford to send them to the hospital. We use natural medicine we boil roots of trees to treat them instead of Western medicine. Thank God so much. The sickness that my family struggle is not serious. He always show his mercy to my family. I want you to know that I'm a person of care. I care for my children. I asked them to write down their dream for me and I saw some of them want to be a doctor, a police officer, 
a high school teacher and a pastor. I'm so proud to see their dream. I realized that I cannot do everything for them, so I put them in God's hands. And I believe God will bless them and lead them to success. I think my role as a father can have a large impact on my children's life. So I need to be careful to treat my children. Even though sometimes I feel weak and tired, but I try not to show them. No matter how easy or difficult it is, I want them to know that I love them and I try to do everything for them. I pray to the Lord. The way that I treat my children will influence how they will look after other people when they grow up. You know, I dream and never stop dreaming. I always remember my father's word that told me to dream and work for the dream. Being a father, I do prepare the way for my children. I know that I cannot support my children financially forever but I can prepare them by sending them to school, teach them the Word of God, and I hope in the future when they finish school, they can reach their goal and get a good job. The most of all, they can bring the blessing of Jesus Christ to other people. This is my life. Thank you so much for listening to my story. God bless you. Hello, I am Onirath. I am 28 years old. I am living with my parents with eight family members. I am working as a project manager at Asian Orange Cambodia, AOC. I love my job and so grateful to be working at AOC. I have been working here for almost three years. It's a blessing of taking part in this ministry to serve my community. Asian Orange Cambodia is a blessing to Cambodians. I would like to share with all of you about being a father. Although I'm single, I have experienced how much important fathers are in Cambodia. When I was a boy, I didn't understand how much my father supported our family. I just enjoyed being his son, but after I grew up, I realized how much he did for me and the responsibilities he carried. I now see how much he loved us and no matter how tired he was, he would do anything to support us. I am who I am today because of my father. He is my hero. In my role as leader for the AOC Assisting Children to School Project, I have a lot to do with poor village communities. Today, I would like to share with you about one father in village named Cho Chong in Stung Trang province. His name is Don Khan. He is 80 years old, who is married to his wife named Samson and has eight children. The oldest is 40 years old and the youngest is 12 years old. Four children are married and have left home to build their own family. The other four are still living with him. He faced many struggles and worked very hard to care for his family. He wanted his children to grow up and have a good future. He wanted them to go to school, but he couldn't afford to send them. He thought he could do nothing to educate them. Three years ago, he was very sick and the family got into hard times. His wife had to work double to try to support the family. They could hardly afford daily food and often only had to survive on a little rice and salt. He was hopeless and discouraged. He almost gave up his hope of sending his children to school. But then Asian Orange Cambodia came and shared with him the hope in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Every week, we do a home visit to encourage him. We also have one of his daughters to go to school. And as a father, he is so thankful for the help we 
are giving to him and to his daughter. You know that being a father to a family is very important. And we want to support fathers. A father might not be able to give everything that the children want. But a father can still show children that they are important and special. A good father is a hope to a family. Behind the successful story of a son and daughter, there is father. I am so grateful to my father and my heavenly father. Thank you so much everyone for your valuable time to listen to my story. Blessing from our loving Father God to all of you. Thank you. Fathers, a special happy Father's Day to you. We're blessed to be fathers and uh, pray God's blessing on your home and your families. God is able. God is with us. God is with us. God is on our side. He will make a way far above all we know, far above all we hope for. He has none.
our God is able in his name we overcome for the Lord our God is able for the Lord our God is able for the Family Church and Happy Father's Day to all the dads today and to all the boys and girls who are honoring and celebrating their dad today. Well tell me boys and girls, what is your dad like? Is he smart like Iron Man? Is he strong like the Hulk? Is he kind and funny like Spider-Man? Is he brave like Captain America? Is he really talented and the very best at doing something like Hawkeye? Is he a leader like Optimus Prime? Autobots transform! So all of these pretend superheroes are good guys, aren't they? And they have wonderful characteristics like kindness and bravery, but they all have something extra too, don't they? They all have something that gives them super Power. Iron Man has a special suit that can fly. Hulk has huge muscles. Hulk! Smash! Spider Man has his spidey sense that alerts him to danger. And of course, he has his web. He's a little worried today because he can't find his mask. It must be around here somewhere. Captain America has super soldier abilities and of course his super shield. Hawkeye is extremely skilled with a bow and arrow. He's a really super talented archer. And Optimus Prime has super strength and of course he can transform. Autobots transform into other things and he is pretty much indestructible. You cannot break him. All of these fun toys are enjoyable and they have fun pretend stories. So I have a question for you. Is your dad pretend or is he real? Well, of course he's real, isn't he? But just like all these superheroes are different with different characteristics and different abilities, not all dads are the same either, are they? They look different, they sound different, they have different skills and talents, they act differently. And there is another difference. You might have always had the same dad ever since you were born. But you might have a new dad that has, has come into your family at some time. Or maybe there's a grandpa or an uncle that takes care of you like a dad. Whoever your dad is, God has given him to you and to your family. And it's not easy being a dad. It's not easy being your dad. You can be quite a handful sometimes. But God has given him a great responsibility, you and your family. But God doesn't just tell dads, go be awesome, but you're on your own, I'm afraid. Good luck with the family. No. God has also given dad help and instructions on how to be a super dad. And he's given children instructions too. You remember, of course, the fifth commandment that tells you to obey your parents. That's mom and dad. Well, Proverbs 23 also tells you to listen to your father. And just before that chapter in Proverbs 22, dad is told, to teach and train their children about God. So how can your dad be smarter than Iron Man and have more sense than Spider-Man? So he knows how to teach and train his family, how God wants him to. Well, James chapter one, verse five tells dads, ask for wisdom and God will give it to you. A smart dad asks God for wisdom 
a lot. Deuteronomy chapter 31 tells Dad, be strong and courageous because I am here to help you. Now, is your dad really good at doing some things? Like, is he good at building things or fixing things? Or maybe he's really good at listening to people's problems and helping them sort them out. Maybe your dad is just like Hawkeye and he is a tremendous archer. Maybe he's really good shooting an arrow with a bow. Whatever your skills or talents or gifts your dad has, First Peter tells him, God expects him to use those gifts and talents to help other people to show God's love. When your dad is teaching you how to do something that he's very good at, you should listen to him. The Bible tells you to, and he's obeying God when he is teaching. And Ephesians chapter six, verse four, tells dad about the greatest responsibility that God has given him to be the leader of his family. God has told him to raise his children with love and kindness. So, like I said, it's not easy to be a dad. And you know, I'm sure your dad prays for you a lot. He thanks God for you and prays that God will protect you and lead you in your life. But boys and girls, I want you to pray for your dad. Pray that God will protect him and lead him and give him all the superpowers he needs. Love and kindness and patience and courage and wisdom and faith in God. And remember when you pray to be thankful too. Thank God for the dad that he has given you to love you, to take care of you, and to teach you. And remember to thank your dad today for all he does as the superhero of your family. Hey, has anyone seen my mask? I need my mask. What does your dad do at work? Uh, work with the people. Make metal sculptures. My dad fixes something. What does your dad do at work? Um, gets ready for church. Oh yeah, gets ready for church. Okay. He builds houses with his friends. Before your dad had kids, what did he do all the time? Talk about having kids. Play video games. Sleep in the morning. <laughs> Date my mom. What does daddy say all the time? I love my family and especially mommy. What does your dad say all the time? I love you and let's go fishing. What does daddy say all the time? No. Dar? What makes daddy happy? Daddy likes butterflies. Butterflies? Nice. Hugs. Tickle fights. Me and my baby brother. Loving and caring. Being good children. For us to listen to obey him, help him with a few things, like chores. His friend. What's your favorite thing to do with dad? A giant boat. That's a hard one. Fish. Dirt bike and fish. Go to the zoo. Go for a car ride. Rock me on time. Go out for dinner. Snuggle with him. Play catch and baseball. Go fishing. And fish. Play and fish. How much money does your dad have? None. Lots. Billions of dollars. I think 790. I believe 790. 70 dollars? How much money does your daddy have? So much. Have <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Who's the boss of your dad? No one. The government. God. The police. He doesn't have one. Who is the boss of your dad? Mommy. Mom. You. My mom. Jesus. So, hey. What is daddy really good at? Singing. Giant ball. Playing soccer. <gasps> Fixing machines. Having tangle fights. What is your dad really good at? Sweeping. Frog catching. Um, fishing and hunting, dirt biking. What is your dad really good at? Backflips. He's good at going to work. 
making supper and lunch. And supper and lunch. What does daddy call you? Baby. Honey. Sweetie. What's one thing your dad has taught you? He's taught me lots of things. He taught me um what a suspension is on a snowmobile. He taught me how to mow the lawn. He taught me how to weed eat. Pretty much all. He's teaching me how to do science. How to hunt. He's taught me how to build a deck, hunt, fish. To dirt bike. Build a house. To listen to obey and play catch. How do you know daddy loves you? Because I make him proud sometimes. Because he takes care of me. He would sacrifice his life for me. Because he tells me. How do you know that daddy loves you? Because he loves butterflies and dogs and squirrels. I make him happy and he's the bestest. Daddy says it and I know he loves me. How do you know your dad loves you? When he snuggles you and kisses you and hugs you. <laughs> Because he's super nice to me and he, and he always keeps me calm. Why do you love your dad? Because he's adorable. He spends time with me. Because he's awesome. Because he is so beautiful. Because he gives me ice cream. Because he is the best. Beautiful. As he loves butterflies too. I do. Butterflies too. I love you, Dada. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. Love you, Chipmunk. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Dad. Fall Day. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love, I love you, Dad. I love you, Dad. Just want to share for a few minutes uh, a short thought. And you might think it's uh, incompatible with Father's Day, but it's not. I want to go back to where we were. And for these last several months, we've been walking through 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. And so we're going to continue our walk there, but we are actually going to go to Psalm 51. Uh, and let me set it up for you. And uh, pay a special attention, fathers, I would ask, because there is power here for you and, and for all of us. Psalm 51 is David's famous prayer uh, that he prayed after Nathan came in and confronted him and challenged him. And David uh, fell on his face, said, I have sinned and sought God's forgiveness. And God instantly transformed him. I said to you last week that we are to be a church of Nathans. We are to be uh, grace ambassadors. We are to bring people back to the Lord. And so I wanna look at Psalm 51 and it's David's prayer, how he talked to God after he fell and after uh, Nathan brought him into restoration. Because there is a key element in that famous prayer uh, that uh, we often overlook. As an early teenager and as a, as a child uh, in, our, in our church circles, they used to sing the chorus, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right understanding unto me, and take not the joy of my salvation. Well, that's based from Psalm 51. But there is a word in Psalm 51, or, or a little section, that we often forget. And I just want to read you those two verses. This is David's prayer. This is his public prayer, uh, where he just shows to everyone his heart. Uh, but he, he adds these words uh, in his prayer. He says to this, yes, restore to me the joy of, your salva of my salvation, because when we sin, we lose the joy of God's presence and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then it's verse 13. So Psalm 51, verse 13, is where I want you to key in now and later. David says this, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. Then I will sing joyfully of your righteousness. Then, then, Lord, I will open my lips and I will declare your praise. But hear that. David says, oh, when you do your work in me and when I am restored, I promise you, God, that I will teach transgressors your ways. Now, that's a fancy way of saying this. God, I will tell other people about you. 
And in David's return to the Lord, in David's walk with the Lord, he recognized that this was a key element of what he must do. He must tell others about God. He must bring others to God. That was the key ingredient. That was the key component. That was a foundational uh, piece to his relationship with God. And I'm just going to be straightforward with you this morning. Uh, Many times we have forgotten that foundational piece. We give lip service to it, but each and every one one of us are called to be, uh, well, the New Testament says this way, we are called to be Christ ambassadors. Let me read to you a portion of scripture that Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, We know the famous first portion of the verse that says this, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old have passed away. Behold, the new has come. And we say, hallelujah. I am brand new. Christ has taken away my sin. Christ has given me a brand new start. I claim that verse and that is a powerful verse for everyone. But Paul doesn't stop there. He continues and he says these words. After he says, uh, behold, the new has come and we are a new creation, he says this in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. All this is from God who, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and, listen to this, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave to each one of us the ministry of reconciliation. He saved each one of us. He made each one of us brand new when we come to Jesus Christ. But then he gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? He gave to us the right, the privilege, the mandate, and the responsibility that we would tell others about Jesus Christ. Paul continues. He doesn't stop there. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So God has said to you and I, when we come to to Christ, the responsibility that we have is to tell other people about being reconciled to God, to tell other people about how to be uh, connected to God. That is our right, that is our privilege, that is our responsibility. And if we are not fulfilling that responsibility, then there is a serious lack in our relationship with God. It might reveal itself in in emptiness, uh, blandness, something is missing. You see, we weren't uh, called just to be saved and then wait for heaven. We were called to be saved and then to serve. And God said, I am giving you now this ministry responsibility, not just to clergy and preachers and special ones, and twos, but to all of us to speak of Jesus Christ to whomever you meet. Paul says, we have been entrusted with this ministry of reconciliation. And then verse 20 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says, therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We are Christ's ambassadors, which means we are his representatives. So dads, I'm talking to you this morning. And moms, I'm talking to you this morning. Teenagers and children, I'm talking to you this morning. Your Christianity will lack if you are not being an ambassador of Christ. I could use the word a representative of Christ. God has said, I have chosen you to live for me. You are my billboard. You are my, you are my voice. You are my hands. This is your mandate. We don't just sign up to be saved. We sign up to be saved and to serve him. And it's in that serving where we know the joy of the Lord. Uh, We have been shut out from church for several months from gathering together, but we have not been shut out from being the church. We've been shut out from a gathering place, but we are still to be the church. And so when we come back now to the physical building, we haven't arrived and that's not where we stop. We come back so we can come together, be strengthened, be be equipped and go and be ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Can I say to you, dad, that, that, uh, yeah, we're we're all different and we all have different talents and and different, different skill sets and, and, and different different giftings, but all of us have the responsibility to show other people Jesus Christ. Be it with words or be it without words, be it with actions or, or, or be it behind the scenes. We all have a responsibility and your Christianity is not normal if you are not fulfilling and living that responsibility. You are not a, called to be a carpenter uh, and then a help by Christ. You are called by Christ and he, he gets you to be a carpenter so you can do what you're supposed to do for Christ. Your primary calling is is not your job. Your job helps you with your primary calling, and your primary calling is to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Let me read you uh, some some uh, powerful words uh, just for a few moments of time. 
It says in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 11 to 12, and I, I, uh, I love these words. It says, deliver those who are being taken away to death. I said Proverbs 24, verses 11 to 12. Deliver those who are being taken away to death and those who are staggering to slaughter. Oh, hold them back. It's very emotional. Save those who are being taken to the slaughter. If you say, see, we did not know this, does not he, God, consider it who weighs the hearts, and does not he, God, know it who keeps your soul, and will he not render to man according to his works? Save those. It is your mandate to save those that are being taken to the slaughter of hell. It is your mandate to save those that are, 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 are staggering to their deaths. And you can't say, I didn't know about this, because God says, I'm holding you responsible. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30 says, He who is wise wins souls. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 8 to 9 says these words, Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all the unfortunate. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and defend the rights of the afflicted and the needy. We must be Christ's ambassadors. We announce his word to people who don't know him, and we announce his righteousness and his morality and his teaching to this entire world. That's our role. It's not limited to a select few. It is for all of us, and it says that God will hold us accountable. There are famous words in Ezekiel uh, that uh, can uh, be... Uh, can seem like a cudgel to our heart. Uh, they are powerful words. And I don't read them to you now to make you feel guilty, but I read them to you now so that you can know that God is calling us to be part of this, of this, uh, of his face, of his love to everyone. And that's the missing ingredient in so many of our churches. So let me read you these famous uh, verses from Ezekiel. Ezekiel repeats himself several times throughout his writing. But I'm taking these from Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 to 21. God is speaking. When I say to the wicked, you will surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out to warn the wicked from his wicked way that he may live, the wicked man will die in his iniquity. And here's the kicker. Here's the powerful part. But his blood I will require at your hand. Yet if you have warned the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness or from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. Somehow, when I speak to others, I am bringing myself uh, into God's presence and I am doing what I'm supposed to do. But more than that, God says, if you don't do it, I'm holding you responsible. We, we don't like that. Uh, I signed up for the couch trip and, and the comfy ride. But, but God says, no, I hold you responsible. And I will, I will hold it on you. And we say, well, that, that's the Old Testament, so that, 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 shouldn't, that shouldn't hold in the New Testament. Really? John writes and says, whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother needs and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? How if you see the need of your brother? How do you see the need of your sister? Uh, those who are saved and those who aren't saved. How if you do not be Christ to them? What good is your, is your faith? What good is your love? So I am trying to save you in this brief moment of time to dads. And we have amazing fathers in this church. I'm trying to say to the whole family that Father's Day, our Heavenly Father is saying to us, you are my children. I want you to tell others about me. Ezekiel says, I will hold you accountable. Let's be wise. Let's be Christ's ambassadors. Let's learn the lesson that David did after he fell so badly. He said, I will bring, I will teach, I will tell others about Jesus Christ. The enemy loves it when we are silent. The enemy, the enemy giggles when, when we struggle with leaving our comfort zones. He, he laughs out loud when we, when we judge our obedience by our convenience level. Uh, that's not who we are. We are so much more. We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And that's where the power is. When we are speaking out and when we are standing and we are going forward in his name, showing the love of Jesus Christ. The miracle was not meant for the sanctuary. The miracle was meant for the street. You're lacking God's power in your life? Then be who you're supposed to be. And that's where the power is. God bless you this Father's Day. Be the ambassador of Jesus Christ. Be the representative of Jesus Christ, who you are. I am thrilled by what I see, but we can be so much more. So when we come back to church, let's not come back to a room. Let's come back so we can go out and be the church that Jesus Christ has called us to be. God bless you. God keep you. And God be with you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. And Lord, this short message, this little, this little uh, uh, talk that I have just given, 
Would you inspire our hearts that we would live in our responsibilities, but we would have the joy of your presence and we would have your passion and power walking in our lives. God, you didn't call us to be hidden away. You called us to be a light on the hill. And so, Lord, make this church, make our friends the light of Jesus Christ that overpowers the darkness. Father, this is my prayer. And Lord, for those dads right now on this Father's Day, help them to lead their families in the true way of Jesus Christ. In his name I pray, amen. <music>